Welcome to the Half Done Hobbyist. Today I'm going to be showing you how I painted Blood Bowl star player a Wilhelm Cheney in my own team colours, the Harkenhall Hornets. I undercoated them with Corax white spray, just giving it an even coating all over. I then covered all the fur in Wildwood Contrast. I really love this colour and it was the perfect colour for his fur. I made sure not to get any Wildwood on his feet, his hands and under his arm, where there's a big patch of skin. Instead, I put Gulliman Flesh over that. Gulliman Flesh is a wonderful colour. It does all the shading for you without you having to do very much at all. You don't even really need to highlight it when you're just doing something for tabletop standard. And I must stress, this is not going to win any Golden Demons. This is for tabletop standard to get you a really good looking team on the board. Nothing more. I'm not going to spend hours and hours on a miniature for this. It's just going to be tabletop. So you wait until the wildwood's dry and then you slap the gulum and flesh on. Before you put the gulum and flesh on, maybe have a little tidy up with Corax white just so that there's no dark bits because if you get a big bit of wildwood in the middle of your gulum and flesh, it can look a bit rubbish. Something I did notice when applying the wildwood to the fur was that when it dries and it seeps into the recesses, sometimes it can leave some of the sharpest peaks unpainted because the paint just seeps off them completely and leaves it white. So just after it's dried, make sure you go back in and tidy up with more wildwood. The next step is to cover the shirt and shorts with Averland Sunset. Now what you want is a couple of thin coats on this, but you don't want to lose control of the paint. So if it's too watery on your brush, dab it off on a tissue and then go for it. What you want to end up with is a solid coat of yellow. If it's patchy, it just looks horrible with yellow, yellow especially. So just take your time, let it dry between coats and just make sure it's perfectly solid before you move on to the next step. There's also some yellow in the shoulder pad, so the shoulder pad's going to be segmented into yellow, black, yellow. So make sure you get the two outer bits of shoulder pad as yellow, and then leave space for the black stripe in the middle. So next we'll move on to Corvus Black and we'll paint the bat wing, the belt round his waist, and the stripes down the side of his shorts. I started off by painting the strap across his chest black, because I wanted that black leather but that was a really stupid idea because he's going to have black stripes across his chest and it's all going to blend together and just be a big mess. So I changed that to Rackarth Flesh. I couldn't make it brown because it would either blend with, if it was too dark a brown, it would blend with the fur. If it was too light a brown, like snakebite leather, it would blend with the yellow. So I went for Rackarth Flesh instead. Metallics don't show up very well over a light undercoat. So what I did here was paint all the metallic bits with Black Templar Contrast. It seeps into the recesses, it gives a really good covering and really gives a strong base for a metallic colour to go over the top of it. We're going to be using Lead Belcher for all the metallics. There's a skull on his strap and that was base coated Ushabti Bone. It's just what I like to use and it comes out looking pretty decent. There's a band round his wrist that I painted Rackarth Flesh and there's lots of bandages around him as well so they're all Rackarth as well. After that I made sure to tidy up the yellow with Averland Sunset again. Making sure everything's dry, especially the Black Templar that we put on the metallics, I then went and blocked in all the metallic bits with Lead Belcher. Just make sure you cover all the metal to make it look solid. I painted the sash around his arm Mephisto in red, and this might seem like a weird departure from the rest of the colour scheme, but bear with me, there's a story behind it. Most of the Harkenhall Hornets were recruited from neighbouring Reichsburg. Well, not so much recruited as killed and reanimated. The Reichsburg Royals weren't happy about this for very obvious reasons, because most of them were the lords of the town, so a vicious rivalry developed between the two teams. The moment that really sundered relationships between the two teams was when Lord Unterhand's son went to play for the Harkenhall Hornets after a particularly vicious game where he came down with a bad case of lycanthropy. Wilhelm now wears Unterhand Jr's sash around his arm whenever they play the Reichsburg Royals just to really rub it into Lord Unterhand. Needless to say, when the two teams do play each other, the Royals really try to hurt or kill Wilhelm. No luck yet. Strangely, sales of pure silver knuckle dusters in Reichsburg go through the roof before any meeting with the Hornets. Anyway, back to the painting. The ball is given a nice solid coat of Mornfang brown, and the reason I chose Mornfang is to differentiate it from the Wildwood fur. The next bit is where the colour scheme really gets its character, and that is the black stripes. It's fairly easy to paint stripes, so the best way to do it is 
one line across the top and then another line underneath the width apart that you want the stripe to be and then you just fill in the middle bit and then you move up the width of that stripe and then start another line and then you put another line on top of that fill in that bit in the middle really easy if there's a gap between the lines like a neckline or something just make sure that all the bits line up so that you can you go straight across and it doesn't look wonky so all you do is repeat that method until you've covered the whole shirt the back of the shirt was especially pleasing to paint the lines looked really good on that and another thing you have to do is follow the folds of the fabric but that's pretty easy to do now the next stage is a very satisfying one and that is the wash I know a lot of people turn their noses up at washes but for the level that I'm aiming at washes are absolutely fine we don't need to go in and shade each recess or anything like that individually we're going to wash so slap that Agrax earth shade on liberally on the shirt, the skull the sash, the red sash on his arm, and all the Rackarth flesh bits. Make sure that's dried, and then wash all the metal bits with null oil. Quite a heavy wash, because you want it to look quite dirty and worn. We're on to highlights now, and the first one is Averland mixed with Ariel Yellow. I find that if you go straight to Ariel, then it's a bit too obvious, but I find if you do a 50-50 mix of Averland and Ariel, it gives a much nicer gradation. The next highlight is pure Ariel, and after that, we're going to mix a little bit of Dorn Yellow in, and then go pure Dorn Yellow. It took me a while to be satisfied with this recipe, and I'm still not 100%. I mean, everyone knows that painting yellow is quite difficult. So I'm going to try again after this, and if I'm not satisfied then, I'll try again, and I'll try again, until I nail it. Now highlighting the shirt might seem a bit daunting, because there's a lot to do and you don't know how to handle each different area, but I just broke it down into two types of highlights, edge highlights and what I call fold highlights. So edge highlights are pretty self-explanatory. Anytime there's a bit of yellow with an edge, highlight it. Anytime the yellow goes near another colour, highlight it. Treat it as a sharp edge, like where the yellow and the black meet on the shoulder pad. Just below the black, highlight it with the yellow. For the fold highlights, just be brave and highlight the top of each fold with the lighter yellow colour. You want to highlight quite a chunk of it so that you can then paint the lighter highlights within that one and then the lighter highlights within that one. I've said that a few times, but it's just like highlighting your highlights. Each one should be smaller and smaller until you're just at pure Dorn Yellow for a tiny wee line or a wee dot. Like I said earlier, we're going for tabletop quality on these, and taking your time on these stages will really make them look fantastic from just a few feet away. Also, don't be afraid to go too bright on the cloth highlights, because the brighter you go, the better it looks in my opinion. Let's work on the black next, and for this I used Pure Dark Reaper as the largest highlight, and just did it in exactly the same way as the yellow. It does give a slight blue tinge to the black, but I'm absolutely fine with it for this model. That is actually the look I was going for. Probably the trickiest black bit was the bat wing. I probably could have done better on the bat wing, but I'm quite happy with how it came out. So all I did was edge highlight all the raised bits, and then there's little curved bits in the membranes, and I just gave a little line of highlight to each one of them. And I worked it up through Dark Reaper, Thunderhawk Blue, and Fenrisian Grey, just the same way as I did with the yellow. Don't forget about the leather glove either, there are actually lots of little bits to highlight on this, but you need really good eyes for it. I've got really old eyes and it's actually beginning to slow me down a bit when it comes to this kind of thing, but if you can see the detail, stick a highlight on it and it'll look great. When highlighting with Fenrisian Grey, make sure you thin it down as much as you can, because if you put on a big lump of Fenrisian, it's going to show up really starkly, whereas if you put it on thinly, it dries really nicely and blends in very well. I thought it was all looking a bit too dark, so I decided to paint the face as pale flesh colour just to add a bit of interest. So I painted everything from here, the ears, and down the muzzle, a uh, Cadian flesh tone. I left the nose as the wildwood colour, and it worked really well. After that, I highlighted it with Kislev flesh, just picking out all the raised areas. I don't know if I made the right decision on the colour of the face, but maybe you can let me know in the comments below. I hadn't done anything with the fur up to this point because I really wanted to get it right. What I settled on was a light dry brush of Bane Blade Brown, followed by an even lighter one of Terminatus Stone. I think it came out really nicely, worked really well. If you're new to dry brushing, get paint of the desired colour on your brush, wipe as much of it off as you can on a tissue, and then just drag it lightly over the texture on the model. It'll, the high areas will pick up the paint really nicely. You don't want to go too hard on your first pass, because you can always add more, but it's very difficult to take it away. Some people frown upon dry brushing, but it's much easier than painting each individual strand of fur. 
dry brushing is ideal for fur in heavily textured areas like that. For all the rack art areas such as the strap, the little bit round his wrist and all the bandages, I highlighted with Screaming Skull. Just a very light edge highlight round all of these areas. If you wanted to take it another step further, it would be Pallid Witch Flesh next. For his little skull and his strap, I used the Shabti Bone on all the raised areas. For the dome of the skull, I just did a circle in the middle and then feathered it a little bit towards his eyebrows. Next step was just to get Screaming Skull and highlight the highlights again. For the metal bits, an edge highlight of Stormhost Silver did the trick. The ball was highlighted with Scrag Brown and the laces were painted in with Corax White. I then painted the checks on the red sash exactly the same way as I did in my Griff Oberwald video. I got a thin Ushabti bone, created a grid pattern and then filled in each other check. Make sure that all the checks are painted solidly and then you can highlight with Screaming Skull. You can make these checks look as good as you want just by going back and correcting your mistakes if you've got the patience for it. Like I say, tabletop, few feet away, no one's going to notice if your checks are a wee bit squee with but you could go back with Mephisto on red and just make sure your lines are a wee bit sharper. I went back in with Mephisto on at least once just to tidy things up a wee bit. There's a little helmet on his base and I painted that in Reichsburg Royal colours again. So it was just Cantor blue highlighted with Altdorf guard blue and the face mask was painted with Retributor armour. Um, the whole thing was given a wash of Agrax Earth shade and then it was really blended into the base with Sterling mud. The base was base coated in Steel Legion drab and then covered in Sterling mud. After that was 100% dry and it can't even be a little bit tacky because it will just run and create a big mess. I went in with watered down PVA glue all over the top of the base. After that I sprinkled grass on it and then let it dry completely before the next step. The final step is to get Corax white straight out of the pot, unthinned and draw a straight line across the front of the base. And that's it, you've now painted your star player to a fairly decent standard. If you paint the rest of the team the same way, they'll look absolutely brilliant. I'm going to do a lot more painting tutorials this year. I haven't really worked out the ins and outs of the photography yet, but I certainly will. So stick with it. If you enjoyed this video, then feel free to give it a like. If you want to see more like this, then maybe think about subscribing. Once again, thanks for watching, happy hobbying, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Cheers.